All right, if you're like me and have used Anki, you've probably come to this predicament where you end up getting so many cards in your deck and you don't know what to do. It's like you have to review them because you need to know this material, but it's like taking all your time trying to go through your Anki cards. So I'm gonna tell you how I've made more cards this term in medical school. The last exam I made over 2,500 cards and I got through them easier than I've ever gone through an Anki deck. Okay. So, first off, let's talk about settings. I set my cards to um, 200 review and 150 new cards. So that's 350 is the maximum amount of cards that I'll see in a day. And 350 cards, that takes, that takes me like three hours to go through. Because um, mine are a little dense. Sometimes there's multiple answers in one card, you know? So sometimes they're easier, sometimes harder, but um, that's how long it takes me to make my style of cards to go through 350 cards, about three hours. Uh, I think if you make the settings higher and you're reviewing more cards, uh, I think there could be a detriment. Anki's a great tool, okay? It's a great tool. Um, but I think there's a limit because it's just one tool. You need to also be doing practice questions. You also need to be going deeper into certain material that you're struggling with, like whiteboarding. You need to just go in a lot more detail than what the Anki card is doing, okay? And sometimes those things take more time. So Anki shouldn't be taking your whole entire day. It shouldn't, it shouldn't really be your only study technique. Okay, so that's what I found. That's, that's why I have 350 set up for that. That's something that I can handle, three hours. All right, now say it's the first day of class or, or the weekend after an exam and you need to start making cards for the new material. So say, just for example, uh, I make 80 cards, 80 cards, 80 new cards. My goal then for that day, I've made 80 cards in the day. My goal is by the end of the day, I need to have reviewed all 80 cards before I fall asleep. <laughs> okay, so any new card I make in that day must be reviewed one more time. So there's a lot of benefits to this. So sometimes they're easy. You'll get through them super fast. I mean, sometimes it takes like 15 minutes to go through 80 new cards. So that's one benefit. Uh, the other benefit is that you're getting your brain used to seeing that material one more time, okay? So you've learned it from lecture, but you get one more shot to like, just get it before you see it in four more days. So I have my, my setting, how often I'll see these, the easy cards, four days, okay? So one more shot. Um, I noticed that like, if you can get it in that same day, it like solidifies what you've learned. And then the next time you see that card, it's not nearly as bad because you've kind of like made a stronger foundation from the beginning. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is, you know, as you start accumulating cards, um, you need to get through every single one. You got to get through them anytime you can. The goal should be to just get through every single card. Okay, set little blocks. Say like at 3 p.m. for one hour, you need to get through as many as you can. Or some goal like, uh, you know, my pace usually, I try to get through at least 150 cards, somewhere around there, in around an hour, you know, something like that, maybe an hour and a half. Okay, so that's kind of my goal. I'll do that like midday or something. Or anytime I have some spare time. So if I'm waiting for something to cook or I'm waiting for coffee to heat up, I'll try to just get through like one or two, okay? And then at night, if I have any left over, before I fall asleep, I make sure to hit every single one, every single one. And if I've happened to make more than 150 new cards, I'll try to knock those out too. So the goal is to try to knock as many as you can out as early as you can. This will help you in the long run because as you start accruing cards, you're gonna have more and more to review, okay? And if you miss days of doing cards or reviewing them or making them, um, you're gonna get these gaps where you'll get really easy sections and then you're gonna get a ton of cards in a very short period of time, especially when, like say if you try to play catch up in your material. So this is more like a test, test, like study techniques and how to like do well in school in general is that you need to be doing work every day. And if you're making cards every day, then down the road when you have to review those cards again, you don't have like a ton of cards to review. You only have like so many that you've seen previously. Whereas if, like say if you were not doing very well and you weren't making a lot of cards and all of a sudden you're trying to play catch up like on the weekend, then like, the, you know, four days from that day, you're gonna have a ton to review. Okay, so do cards every day. <laughs> all right, now let's talk about quality of cards. You have to make good cards, that's the key. How do you make good cards though? Um, 
something that I've been incorporating tremendously is multiple choice. It is a great way, like especially if the material has a lot of pieces of information that can be confused, you know, like a bunch of different drugs that all kind of work on, let's say the neuron, okay? So like if there's a neuron and there's a bunch of drugs or toxins that kind of all inhibit it, I like to put all of them into a multiple choice and I'll ask myself a question, well, which one is the calcium blocker? Which one is the sodium blocker? Which one is found in fish? Which, you know, something like that. Multiple choice, really cool way to efficiently go through answers. Um, if it's confusing, I try to whiteboard it first before I make a Anki card, okay? White, make sure you understand the material before you make a card. I, there, it, this term, rarely will I make a card of something that I don't really understand. Because then it's, it's confusing when you try to review it. And then it's kind of a crap card because you may have something incorrect on it. So make sure you understand what you're writing. So if you're confused, spend some time with it. Understand it because you know, you're know you wasting time, but then down the road, when you when you see that card again, you're gonna get through it so quickly. So there's a benefit and you understand. You're not just like root memorization, like you see that card and you just know how to answer. You understand the concept. All right, <laughs> this is something I'm trying to work on. This is a new one. Don't make cards of things that you know well. So if it's easy, don't make a card of it. <laughs> um, seems, seems logical. In medical school, there's a lot of fine details. There's a lot of fine details that you need to know because occasionally you will be tested on it. If any of those pieces of information are intuitive or they make sense, I try not to make a card of it. I try not to make a card of everything. Avoid making cards of things that are just like little pieces of information that you're probably not gonna be tested on. You know, if you got a a lecture slide and they've asked like it's it's dense there's tons of things you know pay attention to what the important points are and try to synthesize that information into like just key points okay um because there's a lot of key points that you have to understand and if you're focusing in on these little minute details which i did um you sometimes miss the big pictures this is just medical school in general like you have a ton of information Focus, make sure you, I mean, you have to focus on the little parts, but make sure you understand the big parts too. And that goes for making cards, making hockey cards. Focus in on, you know, what's the whole point of that slide? You know, is it all these little uh, alpha and beta and su whatever subunits, or is there just like a general situation that you need to understand? Okay. Add photos. Add photos tremendously. Um, the human brain is designed for me like visual memory. So add photos, add tons of photos, add them in the question, add them in the answer. Like, like structures, anything with a structure. If it's the brain, if it's the kidneys, whatever, throw a photo in there. Even if it doesn't quite have to do with the question, just throw a photo in so that your, your brain knows kind of like where to go with, with the kind of question that you're asking. Um, don't make the cards too hard. I know, especially last term, I made a lot of really hard cards. I, I was too vague with the question. I was kind of being mean to myself. It takes, I think it's laziness, in all honesty, because it takes time to make really good cards. Um, but if you take that time, you'll get through them faster. So that's another point. Take the time, make sure you understand the material, synthesize it and Ask yourself a very direct question that's not vague. Um, you know, maybe set the whole question up more like a prompt of like a question that you'll see on an exam. You know, like a person comes into a clinic, they have this symptom, this symptom, this system. Um, they've had this for food. Uh, so you're thinking like some toxin or something that they've consumed or, or heart disease or something like that. That is a really good way to save time in the future. Okay, because the review time is really where you're spending a lot of the, uh, the hours. And if you spend the time early to make good quality cards, then down the line, it's just a piece of cake. Okay, that's my rant on how to get through Anki cards faster. Um, it's just work too, sometimes. Sometimes it's just work. You have to just get through a lot of cards. And you have to have that determination to do it every single day. You can't take a day off. That's not how Anki works. You have to do it every single day. You have to do the maximum cards that you've set that limit every single day.
Okay, so I wish you all the best of luck. I hope you guys kick some booty in medical school. All right.